Welcome back to Super Sentai Reviews. This is episode number 14. And in this episode, we're viewing the 17th Sentai, Gosa Sentai Die Ranger. This Sentai was loosely adapted into Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 2. I should point out that the Ranger suits are actually completely different than they are, well... Even though the suits from this Sentai, well, one of course was used for Season 2, the White Ranger, the Kaba Ranger, what was used for the White Ranger in Mighty Morphin Ranger Season 2. Um, the, suit, the, the, the original five suits themselves were not actually seen in America until Megaforce. Well, excuse me, Super Megaforce, where they, yeah, they did pretty much use all of them. Um, this Sentai, one of the biggest names of this one is Chi. And the battles are between basically now the villains are known as the um let's see if I can look it up here. They're these uh human looking people, basically the I think it's called like Gomai tribe, I think they're called. Yeah, they're led by these three people known as a triad. They're it's basically uh two guys and a woman. And, yeah, it's two guys and a woman. And these three are the ones, basically, are the driving force uh, for the for the main villain stuff uh, throughout this whole season. Now you get to learn a lot about the villains in this particular one. You might think, oh, you learn way too much. Now, in case you're wondering, were any of the monsters actually seen in this particular Sentai used in Power Rangers? Yes. Where the villains used. The main villain was used as Modern the Magician. I am not kidding about that. Um, as for his placement, his counterpart is Lord Zed, but not the same suit. Lord Zed was completely different from how. Um, if you ever see, looks like, like he's basically the guy who wears like these big grim robes, and basically he's the he's the emperor. Emperor. Um, Gordai the 15th, I think it is. Yeah, and it's 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 not explained how most of Sentai how he was able to come back. Now, it is explained later on of how he did. I'm like, really? That's how he came back? Yeah. I should point, though, that apparently the the villains, they're out. It's like, like okay, is it and I'm going to out to a friend of mine. It's like, if you he, if he actually see what, what these villains look like, it's just me or is these people are a fan of Hellraiser. Except without that body, body piercing. Like just the style of clothing. It's, it looks very similar to that of Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am not kidding about that. The, their outfits look very similar to that of the Hellraiser suits. Except no body piercing. I should point out that the main villainess, the, the the woman of the group, stunning woman. As a matter of fact, the um, the the pink one, the pink uh, die ranger is also hot too. <laughs> That's one thing quite interesting, though, about the Sentai. It's like the casting of this one. It's like they casted a bunch of gorgeous women to be in this Sentai. Yeah, it's really bizarre. This at least of how it was. Yeah. Okay, they're known as the Gorma Tribe. Yeah. That is what they're called. Gorma Tribe. And the Triumvir, they're the main villain. They're the ones who actually... You see a lot of them. You have Saddam, who is the... Um, Shadam. He's the leader of the group. Uh, Go... Gara. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, she is the... She is the female member of the group, and Zydos, who's Lieutenant Commander Zydos. If you see him, you look like he, he looks like he, he kind of looks like he's wearing this long coat, but uh, he wears like this long. He looks like he's wearing a skirt. Um. Yeah, and it, it looks like also that the uh, the the like two guys are wearing skirts, and the woman's wearing pants. Also, for some reason. The outfits they wear are just really bizarre. Like, they wear gloves that have, like, long fingernails for some reason. All three of them got this for some reason. 
and the the guy who the who you see throughout all the episodes, he has like uh his his outfit like puts this uh it also it seems like very biker and it's just very strange attire. Now they're the guy who's supposed to be the leader. His name is uh the guy who's the emperor of the of the whole entire Goma um uh tribe. Yeah, there's tribes. Is Gorma the fifteenth? And when he first showed up is whenever he opened the, the Gorma Palace. Now, when I read about this, I'm like, Gorma Palace, this won't be interesting. The palace is an upside-down pyramid that floats in the sky. I am not kidding. And also, I should point out that um, in this one, how the rangers are recruited is very interesting. Now, the four of them had already recruited prior to the first episode, but the leader of the group, um, I don't remember his name... Uh, the red one. He got, he was forced into this, and he was made a die ranger against as well. And the one thing I know is quite odd, though. That I don't think they've ever explained this. But apparently, the morphers, the the bracers, is like they call them bracers in the Sentai. In the Sentai, but I think it was morphers. They disappear most of the time when you when you, when you, when you not look at like you you look, you look at the footage, and you see these guys, and they got their morphers on. And it looks like they completely disappear for some reason. And and then when they're ready to morph, they're there on their wrist and they're ready to morph. And it's uh, and, and they're called Excel chargers. Yeah. Where the way they morph is they pull a thing out. Um, well, the thing is basically this way. They turn a the thing around this way. They stick it out and bam. It's similar to how they do it in uh, O-Ranger as well. They do a similar process. Now, do they use these morphers in Power Rangers? No, they don't. They don't use these morphers at all. Um, and pretty much most of the Sentai, basically, it's the Die Rangers versus the Goma Tribe, facing up against various monsters. And of course, partway through it, about about close to episode ten, we get introduced to Warrior, who turns out to be the Red Ranger's father. Who apparently is a member of the Gorma tribe, who basically was also a ranger like he was a die ranger like themselves, but betrayed them to join the Gorma tribe. But um, then basically he married, a, basically was immortal for years, married, and then all of a sudden he gave, sort of gave it up and married a human woman and had two children, basically the red die ranger and his sister. And then basically he did not know about this, but apparently. Uh, because he had missed a lot of the childhood, he basically was about to kill the Red Die Ranger until the guy who is their uh, mentor. Uh, his name is um, let's see. Yeah, he's also built to be a Gormer himself. His name is uh, Kaku. I think his name is. Yeah. He is. Um, he was later revealed to be the chief of staff of Ryu. That's his name, Ryu. Yeah, he was revealed to be the chief of staff for the Gorma tribe, and he wore like this armor. And and when he when he rejoined them, he uh, set these two posts for some strange reason. One that draw chi, the other one draw some whatever Gorma power that they use, just to basically overthrow. Yeah, and for some reason, he was very secretive to his own pupils. For some reason. It's never really properly... Uh, yeah, and they wait to almost the last minute to tell tell the Rangers about this, because they're like, why do they have to disband for? Why? Well, prior to this, a gigantic being shows up because there's pointless fighting going on, and who is the person that shows up? Okay, quiet, it's she. Um, let's see. This is called Dai Jinru. If you see what this thing looks like, it's Serpentera from Power Rangers. I am not kidding, it's Serpentera. And those of you who have seen the episode where uh, Serpent Terra destroys, devastates the whole planet in the Sentai, the footage that that came from, is basically the creature D. 
devastating half of Tokyo, and then pretty much going about destroying almost half the planet, going about destroying cities across the world. I am not kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, really? Yeah, this creature shows up and like, and one of the first things they want, it kills one monster and it tries to destroy the Megazord, the um, the the main Megazord for the Dire Rangers. Yeah, which is basically the Thunder Rangers, the Thunder Zords, the Thunder Megazord in um, Mighty War Power Rangers season two. The same ones that were destroyed at the start of season three, and also the when the Cyber Ranger shows up. Uh, it's actually a little kid. They don't find out for a little while until they, when they, when they eventually do find out, they're they're quite accepting of it. And it turns out, it's something quite interesting though. The Kyber Ranger is the side of the main villain. No joke, he is. And the way he keeps his gore blood hidden was was via a white tiger tattoo he has on his arm. Yep. Yeah. So. He's, he's kind of annoying at first, especially since uh, he's kind of a pervert to um, the Pink Ranger. After a little while, he stops being that. But he actually is a very good fighter, though. <laughs> half the, like, first off, the first thing he, half the time, he just tends to goof off and just whatever does whatever he wants. Like, blood girl scurs, just does whatever the heck he wants, then he starts fighting. And... The Pink Ranger basically also is known for being the visionary of the group, and apparently she finds, and apparently she's from China, for some reason, and her grandfather is the one who made the the morphers for them and a bunch of other weapons that they get uh, throughout the whole Sentai. Yeah, like there's a spinning blade, some guns, stuff like that. Yeah, he basically is their weapons guy. He's basically their Q, and he has to do this. Like, twists his neck. And in the first episode he shows up, the reason why he comes to Japan is because his fiance got kidnapped. Who was his fiance? A much younger woman who was a soap act, uh, uh, who was an actress from a soap opera. I am not kidding. And then, of course, they get married, and apparently the reason why that the, the Pink Ranger is standing grandfather's wedding is because it's not kind of uncomfortable because of the fact the guy married a woman who was about the same age as his own granddaughter. Not kidding. That's exactly what it was. And he's kind of an interesting guy himself. And it turns out there was this um, recurring character. This guy who's kind of like a nerd. And he loves turtles. And he's very he's very friendly. And it turns out and, and when he touched this um, crystal ball... Which all in got, by the way. He apparently transforms into a turtle, and it turns out that he actually is not a, like an eighth, war like a seventh warrior. He's their carrier zord. No joke, he is the carrier zord. Basically, that turtle thing that was seen in season two, yeah, that's him. Except the thing doesn't talk and it doesn't have a human form, like it does in Die Ranger. Um, overall, basically, I don't want to spoil exactly what happens to the villains of what they really are, because it is, like, very head-scratching, and they don't properly explain it. But it's a fun, it was a fun Sentai to watch, and it's only, I think, 50 episodes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's 50 episodes. But, uh, yeah, a couple times they, they try to end the fighting by calling peace, but they have small skirmish battles here and there between the first time they declare peace and the second time. And then after they beat the Triumph, they basically just, the Die Rangers had to fully disband in order to in order to get this uh, creature off the world. And also I should point out, he does not make the mechanical noises like he does in Power Rangers where he looks like he's about to fall apart. This one, he just acts normal. And apparently that Juzen basically doesn't like all the pointless fighting all that much. At one point, he brainwashed the whole... He basically brainwashed almost the entire population of Tokyo to nearly jump off buildings. So yes, this is Sentai, not for kids. 
The previous Sentai was pretty decent for what it, this one is like very dark. There's a lot of alcohol in here, some swearing. Heck, and some of the monsters got really strange. Like Empress Copy Machine, Birdcage Variant. Yeah, a lot of these monsters have got really bizarre names. And by the way, the Birdcage Variant is the worst monster I have ever seen. Apparently, the Birdcage Variant is vagrant is basically a drunk homeless guy who drives around a bus and his monster form is two arms a bird cage with a small little nest and apparently goes in another dimension uh a bird leg and a human leg i'm like really half these monsters are like what the heck heck there's one called the copy empress for crying out loud like when you read about who these monsters are you're like Really? That's their name? It's it, it kind of felt like they were running out of ideas with this one. That's probably the reason why that uh, Cocker Ranger was campy. Because this one was like super dark. At least the main villains were a lot more interesting. Heck, they even had three monsters known as the Three Stooges. I am not kidding. And apparently the Blue Ranger basically has like a grudge with them. Uh, it was also like after the whole father thing wrapped up with uh, the Red Dye Ranger... They didn't do much to them until they gave him a rival, which apparently he went after um, uh, dojo masters who were very too hard on their students, and he killed them. Heck, even after he, he started working for the Goma tribe, he still did it, and he had this big he had this big armor arm uh, armor thing that takes up most of his arm. And basically, he was put there as a rival because I kind of felt like they were run. They it's like when we watch this one like. The monsters, they ran out of ideas for these things. It's kind of the same thing with, uh, in the case of the rival uh, for um, Ryu, he was interesting. I actually, his episodes were pretty ingenious until he died in combat. But yeah, last time he showed up was via Hallucination. Um, the green one, the green Dire Ranger, had a thing for this Peacock Empress, who apparently showed up in the present... And apparently the pollution in the ozone layer apparently is killing her, causing various bits of her headpiece to, to drop off. And also, the triumph is basically very reaction like when, when, when they're sh and they're shocked at everything. They're shocked when, when a pink when the pink ranger is like, what? And I have never seen villains actually concerned for their enemies. I am not kidding about this. It's really kind of bizarre to say the least, but it's a pretty interesting Sentai to watch. I do recommend you watch it after you watch G-Ranger, basically, because G-Ranger is kind of fun. This one is more of the dark Sentai. It's like they really want to go super dark. I should point out there's a, there's not much blood in this one, as in some of the other Sentai, and it, it's a. Uh, it ends on a really like head scratching note when it comes to basically how the villains are basically what they really are. I would not spoil what they are because if if I did that, you would probably not watch it. I watched it and I'm kinda like okay. I'm scratching my head like why did they turn up like this for? Yeah. To say the least, it's it's still a good sentai. But I can kind of see why they decided not to adopt the full thing and they, uh, where they kept the the uh, Mighty Morphin suits instead. But Dire Ranger suits still look really good for, for Ranger suits. They're pretty colorful. Uh, got plenty of white in their uniform, and and also it kind of and this is something really bizarre though. They started out half the time where they couldn't even defeat the um, the main grunts. Yeah, this was like this for the first like. 10 episodes and they finally got better at it and um also the, the grunts are basically got our mimes that wear tuxedos i am not kidding that's exactly what they are uh, of course your ranger basically used the Pony patrol but this one uses basically like I said mimes that wear tuxedos i'm like wow you're really running out of ideas that kind of re explained the reason why it took a while for a main villain to show up in Cocker Ranger. Yeah. But all in all, good Sentai. 
Uh, I do recommend basically who people have never watched this one. Uh, if you're curious where they got the monsters from, watch this one uh, for season two, from whenever season two. Uh, I give the Sentai definitely a nine out of ten, but there's some head scratching moments in it, and um, like Jew Ranger, it is available on Shaw Factory for free, and of course it is available on DVD for fifty bucks. Uh, Cocker Ranger is already on DVD, but they haven't announced when it's going to go up on the actual site yet. Uh, I have heard that the next Sentai for them officially dub is O Ranger, which I've already reviewed, which was used my, my which used Power Ranger Zeo. Okay. So, uh, that is it for this episode, and for now, this series will be on hiatus until I finish up another Sentai. Which Sentai would I finish up next? It's either debatable between either Cocker Ranger, Car, Car Ranger, or Hurricane Ranger. Depends on which one I finish up first, one of those three will be the next episode. But it might take a while. But this is the last one I've actually finished up, and the most recent one. Okay. But all in all, that's it. See you all whenever I get a chance to do my next episode of this. And bye.